Hello and welcome to this Carve Code Maker tutorial. My name is Leighton and in this tutorial we're going to follow on from a tutorial a little while back which was how to do stacked text and I've been asked how cool it would be if you could create a texture on the bottom of the stacked text. So we're going to have a play with it and try to do that within Carvco Maker. So if I just simulate these tool paths so you can see what's happening here. And you can see that this is the stacked text tutorial that I've done. Now what we want to do is add the texture to the back or the bottom of this William. So this blank area here at the front and also at the back there. So I'm going to try to add it onto those portions. I know that I'm going to have a little bit of a problem with it and I'll show you how you can get around it. Okay, so let's delete the simulation first of all. Let's turn on our vectors and I'm going to take a view from the top. So if I take a look down the bottom here, this is the image that I want to import into this job. So let's close this and let's import it into Carveco Maker. So to do that, there are a couple of ways. What you can do is go to bitmaps and import it in there. But what I want to do is create a relief of this or turn it straight into a 3D piece. Okay, so to do that, what I need to do is select the relief drop down at the top here, go down to import and then select import, not import 3D model, just import. Now this is expecting you to select a relief, but I'm going to select an image. Select open and this will open up that image. Now as you can see this has opened up really really large. It's actually been sized in pixels but the program thinks that it's in inches so it's actually 2048 inches. So it's entirely up to you. You can zoom out and then resize it or you can enter a size here. So let's make it let's say 12 inches. Select apply. Now what that's done, it's resized it from the center. So it's actually off screen. So it's quite far away. Now if that happens, you can either zoom out, go and find it and move it back down. Or because I know that this is still selected, press F9 on the keyboard. And that puts that into the center. Now if I rotate this around, so middle mouse button, and then move around, you can see that it's generated a 3D piece or a, a relief from this image. Now, it's 0.3336 high. Now I can either use the red arrow to bring it up or to bring it down, okay? Now, I probably only want this to be a little bit high, really, so let's maybe do it, let's say 60 feb. Okay, so one and a half millimeters and select apply. Okay, now it doesn't really matter what size this is, as long as it covers this inside area, which is going to be the boundary that I want to machine to. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could actually make it that sort of size. It doesn't matter as long as it goes over the area that I want to create this within. Okay. So if I select paste now, it will turn that into a relief. Okay. Now you can see it's not going over the edge here, but I'm not bothered about that because I only want to come up to this point anyway. Okay. Now if you had Carve Code Maker Plus or Carveco, what you could do is select this vector and then trim off the outside of the relief. But you don't really need to do that for what we're doing. 
Okay, what we need to do is machine down to this depth now. Okay, this area clearance that we've got here, which is this one, is okay. But this one that we've got here, we don't really want that one now. The reason being is because that comes down to a flat and we don't want to do that anymore. What we could do is have it coming down so it's so far. Okay, so it's entirely up to you. You could keep this area clear and have it so it just comes down onto the top of this section here, which we know is 60 feet high. You could also just rough out the part when you've done what we call the machine relief. So to generate this in 3D to machine it, you have to do something called the machine relief. So you could rough out the whole part whilst doing that. It's entirely up to you. What I'm going to do is keep this area clear and I'm going to change the finish depth. So I need to take about 60 feet off there. It doesn't have to be 60 feet, I could maybe do 0.1. So if I make that 0 0.4 and then select calculate now. Now what that's done, it's only going down 0 0.4. It's not going down the half an inch. Okay, so let's turn that off. If I were to simulate this now, it would look exactly the same as it did previously. Okay, it's just this isn't going as deep. So with my mouse cursor hovering over there, if you take a look down the bottom right, you can see the Z value is minus 0.4 okay so that changes as you move around okay so let's delete the simulation and what i'm going to do now is machine this texture so turn the vectors back on and i want to machine between these two vectors okay down to a depth Now, if I turn my material block on, the problem that I've got is that if I rotate around, this texture is actually at the top of that material block. So I need to move that down to be at the bottom of the material block. Or I need to move it so it's higher. Because if it was at the bottom of the material block, when I machined it, it would actually cut the part out. Okay, so I need to make sure that this is the height that I want it to be. So I actually want it to the deepest point to be half an inch. Now to set that up, what we need to do is go to tool paths and then go to set up material. Okay, so at the moment, if you're doing 2D work, the model position in material doesn't matter. So it didn't matter previously when we were doing the stack text but it does matter now, okay? So what we need to do is we need to enter a top offset. So I want it to be 0.5 deep, okay? And then when I select okay, you can see that that's now 0.5 deep and that's the correct depth, okay? So that's something that you need to bear in mind. Otherwise, it would just machine fresh air. Okay, because it was on the top. Okay, so let's start machining this. Now I know that I'm going to have a little problem when machining this, so I'll show you what to do with that. So toolpaths, go down to create machine relief toolpath because it's a 3D relief. Rather than doing the whole relief, so if I were to select the whole relief, it would machine on the outside. Don't want to do that because obviously this needs to be standing proud. Okay, so it's got this border and I don't want to have this machined whatsoever. Okay, I don't want this texture on, on the top of there. So what we need to do is come down to selected vectors. And make sure that I've got the inside border selected and I've got all of this stacked text selected. 
Now, what it's doing, it's giving me a warning here, and it says for this toolpath, a center of tool will cut to selected vector boundary. Okay, now that's gonna give me a little bit of a problem when I come to the outside here, and I'll show you why when we go to machining. So finishing options, click select, and we're going to choose a ball nose. Let's use the smallest tool that I have, 16th of an inch. Okay, now I'm assuming that you've already seen the videos on machining 3D pieces. What you need to bear in mind when machining 3D pieces is the step over. So the smaller the step over, the better the finished result will be, but it will take longer to machine. Okay, the higher the step over, the more sanding or the worse the finish will be, but it will be a lot quicker when machining. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at the default just for the time being. And I'm not going to use a roughing tool for this because I've pretty much already roughed this out by using the area clearance. Okay, so I'm going to click calculate now. And that's going to generate a toolpath in between the boundary that I've selected and the text that I've selected. Now, I know that I'm going to have a problem with this because the tool is actually going to overshoot by half of the diameter. Okay. So if I were to simulate this toolpath, so I've got the John and Deb text, simulate that toolpath. So I've got the Williams and the pocket. Now I'm not going to simulate the profile. What I'll do with the profile is move that down. That needs to be at the end. Always cut the part out last. Okay, and then machine relief, let's play this one. So simulation control bar. And I'm going to zoom in a touch. So if, so if I select play, I'll just fast forward it so we can see it. Okay, so it's starting to put that texture on the bottom. Now, if I was using a larger tool, you would be able to see this a lot better. But what's happening is you see here on the right hand side, you can see that it's overshooting by whatever the radius is of this tool. Okay, so what we need to do to overcome this is we need to offset that boundary vector by half of the diameter. Okay, so let's fast forward this. Okay, and you can see that it's also doing it with the text. Okay, so pretty much everything needs to be offset by half of that diameter. Keep on fast forwarding. Right, so, and you can see that because it's doing that, it's taken most of this John and Deb out. Okay, when you were to actually machine this, it probably wouldn't even look this good. It would just completely get rid of most of that. Okay, so what we need to do is start offsetting stuff. So let's delete this simulation. Turn on the vectors again. And what I'm going to do is select this outside boundary. Go to offset. And I'm going to offset this by 0.03125, so half of that diameter. And I'm going to go inwards. I'll just copy this so I can remember it. So I'll go inwards and select offset. Okay, so that's now my new boundary. Okay, I don't really need this outside. It's completely up to you. You can delete that if you want to. I'm going to delete it just so I don't get mixed up. Okay, and then these ones here, let's go outwards and the same result. So that's okay. And then 
What I'm going to do with these is I'm going to move these to a different layer because I want to keep these. Or you could just, while selected, select that one and then recalculate. It's entirely up to you. So let's move these to a new layer. Okay, and I might as well move that to the new layer as well. So it's vector layer five. Okay, so let's close that and then right click on that light bulb so it just shows that. Okay, so this is now my boundary and it's a little bit larger than what we had before. So if I double click on machine relief and then select these vectors, let's just press control A and that will automatically select them all. And then I'm just going to use what I have maybe Let's drop the step over down by about half. Select calculate now. Okay, so let's close that now and let's do some simulating. Let's see what this looks like. So if I simulate that, simulate that, then simulate uh, machine relief. So this is the 3D. What I'll do, I'll play that again so we can see it. Let's fast forward again. Now, what we should see here is it shouldn't overshoot on the edge here, on the right-hand side. Okay, so keep an eye open for that. Now, the reason that it's doing this is because the point or the tip of the ball nose comes to that edge. Okay, so that's why you get the overshoot. Okay, so that looks quite good. And keep on machining. Let's take a look what the text looks like because that looked pretty bad before. Okay, so importantly, it's not losing the John and Deb. Let's just fast forward that. Okay, so that looks quite good. Okay, so that's added that texture to the bottom and it looks quite nice. And you can see that it's, it's kept all of the text nice. So just remember to offset by whatever the radius is of the tool. Okay, especially if you're coming to if you're machining inside a relief. When you open up the machine relief, if you're doing inside the vector, it will give you a warning. So just remember that you need to offset. Okay. Okay, so let's cut the part out. And I'll just delete the waste material. Okay, so that's our finished piece. So all that you need to do now is go to tool paths and then save the tool paths and then you can send that to your CNC machine. Now you can do this for a whole host of different jobs. I would suggest trying to do this on something that is flat first of all and then start trying to do this to varying depths, okay? So I hope that you found this tutorial useful. I hope you got a few tips out of it. And thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.